Thank you. Thank you for being here. My name is Thomas Lafley. I'm a film critic for Variety and RogerEbert.com and also a member of New York Film Critics Circle. Um, welcome to tonight's screening of The Lost Daughter. We have a really exciting panel. So without further ado, I'm just going to start inviting our guests onto the stage. Let's start with Dagmar Dominczyk. Paul Mescal. Peter Sarsgaard. Ed Harris. Dakota Johnson. Olivia Coleman. and writer, director, and producer, Maggie Gyllenhaal. Hi. Hi. So, Maggie, I want to start with you. Um, this is your first film as a director, but it has um, the confidence of a veteran. It's definitely coming from a very profound, honest, and urgent place, both stylistically and thematically, on what it means to walk the earth in the shoes of a woman. So I, I'm wondering how you first um, became acquainted with this material, what was your entry point, um, and why you chose it to be your debut. Well, I, I read Ferrante, I read the Neapolitan novels, My Brilliant Friend, and the mm -hmm. ones that follow, um, I think pretty much like when they came out. And uh, I loved them. I was totally shocked by the books. I, I guess I feel like I have seen so many representations of women in music and books and movies that are compelling, but maybe they didn't feel totally right to me. They feel, they felt like a kind of fantasy. And I think I spent a lot of my time, maybe even I still do in some ways, trying to fit myself into this fantasy that I kept seeing described everywhere and coming up short or feeling like too much. Um, and in, with Ferrante, some of the things she was saying, I was like, I mean, I had never heard said out loud before. And I had this experience where I would feel, I thought, oh my God, this woman in this book is so fucked up. <laughs> and then, you know, less than 10 seconds later, I would think, I really relate to her. <laughs> so am I so fucked up? Or is this actually a common experience that nobody's talking about? And I thought, what if alone, you know, I'm having this experience alone in my room, so are people all over the world. What if you, what if you kind of gave people an opportunity to have that experience in a space like this, you know, surrounded by other people, you know, strangers or your mother or your husband or your daughter? That seemed like a radical thing to do. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to try. I mean, watching it was certainly a really validating experience, and I, I share all those views as well. So what was it like adapting the book, Ferranta being a writer who writes under a pseudonym? Um, most people, or maybe no one knows who she is. So how did you approach her and get to write some? What was that process like? How, how, did, she, did she allow you to kind of own the material, or was she more involved? Uh, yeah, I have so many things to say about this. I'll try and be brief. Um, I, I wrote to her to petition her for the rights to the book. I don't know who she is. I mean, all my interactions with her have been through email. Um, but I emailed her a letter that it took me weeks to write. And um, I said I wanted to direct it and I wanted to adapt it. And I gave her a sense of why and what I was thinking. And um, she said yes. Uh, but she said, this contract we're making is void if you don't direct it which I took, because I don't know who she is, it's just this kind of gift not to know who she is because she's this kind of fantasy 
wise, supportive woman out there in the cosmos. It's like such a supportive thing to do. Um, Cause I was afraid to take it on and direct it. And she, she said, she was saying to me, no, do it. Then I was writing, I was in this theater doing a Q&A about the kindergarten teacher when I re got all these emails that Ferrante had written a Guardian piece to me. I was in the process of adapting the, the script. And the Guardian piece basically said um, that although it will be difficult for her to have the parameters of her work, her book, changed, that she knows that in order for the piece to work, I need to be free and I need to make it mine. And she said, if I were a man, that she wouldn't feel like giving me this freedom. <laughs> but because I'm a woman and an artist, she knows that she has to. We love that. <laughs> Olivia, I wanna turn to you. Um, what was your first entry into the project, but also your entry point into the headspace of this character, who is a very complicated woman as a mother, a professor, a wife, a lover. So how did you craft it um, on your own and with Maggie? Um, um, I met Maggie for lunch in New York, um, which is always exciting, because I think New York is the coolest place in the world. And also, yes, <laughs> and meeting Maggie Gyllenhaal, which was knee-tremblingly exciting. <laughs> and we had lunch. And um, I, I read the script and I was so excited because I'd never played this person before. And but the entry point as a professor, I, I don't have any, you know, in with, with that thing. But um, the mother and the lover and the wife and the things. Um, I'd never seen anything quite so honest about... I feel like I'm a good mummy, but um, there are definitely moments where I'm not proud. <laughs> you know, where I'm just too tired. Or um, this, for the first time, was something that was really genuinely honest about um, you don't have to be perfect, you don't have to be great, and sometimes you can be quite bad at it. And uh, I was very excited to play that. Mm -hmm. and, and watching a film like this, you feel like you want to stand up and go, yes, I... Oh, no, sorry, no one else feels the same. You know, it's that sort of... Um, uh, but I feel like, like actually a lot of people do feel the same. Not about all of it, but some of it. And uh, for me, that was terribly exciting. And to work with Maggie and someone who I'd known as an actress who I adored and had worshipped slightly. I did have a bit of a girl crush. Um, me, me too. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so to, to be directed by someone like Maggie... To be directed by an actor is, is always exciting because they, you know they know how you feel. Um, I, 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 yes, I don't know what else to say. I, I was very excited to be part of it and I've loved every minute of it. It's very nice. So I want to hear from um, everyone, the rest of the actors. What was it like to be directed by Maggie, um, an actor with um, a beautiful career who speaks the language of actors fluently, obviously? So let's start with Dagmar over there and then work our way in. Um, it was a magical dream. <laughs> <laughs> it was a magical dream. We filmed in a pandemic before vaccines on a tiny island in Greece. Just us, really, no family. Maggie and Peter had um, their wonderful girls, but the rest of us just came. And it was like a moment suspended in time where you look up and <laughs> there's Olivia Coleman serving you a Mai Tai. <laughs> and Maggie coming up to you uh, and saying, you're gorgeous, you're beautiful. And whispering in your ear and giving you the freedom and the confidence to tell her story, our story, authentically. Um, I saw the movie for the first time yesterday, and I walked away um, just blown away because the experience of it and, and being guided by Maggie, who is so fucking inspiring because she so um, leads with such confidence and gentleness 
it's a combination I only think a woman can have on a set where she was the boss, but she didn't control you. And it was, it really was just the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah, what else <laughs> can I say? Paul Stern. Um, yeah, I suppose a film, a film like this is testament to the fact that you don't, it doesn't have to be tortured. The process doesn't have to be tortured to make good films. Good films can be made by fundamentally good people. And that, I think that's true yeah. of this film. And also like, yeah. but it's true of the kind of atmosphere that is led, like set by Maggie and Olivia at the front of the film, leading us through it. And um, I think I can speak on behalf of a lot of us that it was, when they set the tone like that, it's very easy to like, or, or, or you, there's a demand to be at that level or try and get to that, that height and step into scenes and engage with the material in a kind of safe but challenging way, I think. So it's a, I'm incredibly proud of it and incredibly proud to have worked with these amazing people. So, yeah. Peter? <laughs> How did you get involved? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it wasn't easy. Um, I mean, I had an amazing experience. I was, like you guys said, on this Greek island, taking care of our children while my wife was making this movie. And I would hang out with my children in the morning. They'd start school at 3 o'clock in the afternoon because of the time difference. They'd do school until around 10 o'clock at night. I'd take them to the beach in the morning and hang out with them. And I had a very deep, awesome experience with my children during the making of this movie. Um, the acting was incredibly nerve-wracking for me on some level because I really didn't want to suck. Um, I thought it would be incredibly embarrassing and humiliating to be really bad in my wife's movie. And, uh, and also, I don't really play roles like this that often where I'm sort of... Um, the object of desire, some sort of like, you know, amazing guy um, <laughs> that everyone would want to be with. And uh, of course, Maggie thought I was right for the role, but I, I had a lot of trouble seeing myself doing it. I was like, when do I kill someone? Or um, so. <laughs> Um, and I remember one of, the, one of the things that I worked on for a while, and you would never know it really watching the movie, is, um, you know, I give a lecture in the movie. And in the, in the script, it was just like a couple of lines. And Maggie was like, I really want you to have a whole lecture that you give. And, um, you know, I'm really not an academic. I was like the worst student you can ever possibly imagine. I, I actually held the record at my high school for least number of days attended in my senior year. <laughs> I, went to, I went to school 71 days my senior year um, and still graduated somehow. So I'm not an academic. However, I got really into the idea of this lecture. A friend of Maggie's helped, Dominique Townsend, who's a professor at Bard. And um, I watched a number of lectures from people that I admired or knew other people admired. I read a ton. I really worked on it. And when I finally went to go give this lecture, I was so nervous. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I mean, this is nerve wracking for me as an actor. Like for me, facing a group of people and talking is not really what it feels like I do for a living. Like I'm used to being on stage and facing like Ed and we're having like a conversation. When I face this way, my heartbeat goes up quite a bit. Um, and I remember Maggie, I did a take and I was just happy to have made it through it. I'd said everything. It seemed like it was pretty good to me. And, um, but Maggie came up and she was like, that's really great. Just take your elbow off the lectern. <laughs> and I was like, take my elbow off the lectern? This is like the life raft. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and so, uh, so I dared to, you know, and my own wife really challenged me. And like I said, you wouldn't necessarily know it in the movie because it's bits and pieces in there, but like that was, that was, 
some of the, that was tough. And I really finally got there. And by the end, I, I really felt like I had been challenged to be better by my own wife. It had somehow happened. And um, I'm proud of those little bits and pieces in there. Ed. I thank my wife, Amy, for reading this script after I read it. And she read it. She's a woman, and she read it. <laughs> and she got it. And she said, Ed, you got to do this movie. So I said, OK. <laughs> I wasn't sure until she had read it. I read it again, and I kind of understood where she was, where Ferrante and where Maggie and where my wife was, how they were perceiving it, where it was coming from. I mean, I, you know, I had a little, I have a daughter and I remember when she was little and taking care of her a lot and getting at times really frustrated and confused and, you know, like, what do I do with her? And she's annoying me or she's demanding things that I, you know. So I, a little inkling of some of, the, some of the frustrations or some of the difficulties of, of being a mother, that kind of thing. But anyway, I had the opportunity. I was told I was going to be working with Olivia Coleman, and I was excited about that because I, I like working with the best people. And uh, she's certainly that. And Maggie was great to work with because she made it a very, I think for all of us, she made it a very personal, intimate uh, experience in terms of the relationship. You know, she, between actor, director, she, uh, she's not someone who gives you a note in front of the crew. She'll, you know, comes up and is very, you know, head. You know, why don't you try doing this? Or what about if he's da 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 da? You know, and you go, okay, Maggie, we'll give it that. <laughs> you know, and then and it was just fun. It was great. I don't, and I, you know, I got to say, I've been doing this for a while, making films and things, and I don't feel that I've never, as an actor in front of the camera, I don't think I've ever felt as relaxed as I did working with Maggie on this. So that was kind of cool. Dakota? Oh. Um, I feel like Maggie, having been, having experienced so many different kinds of films, herself has like waded through all the bullshit of making movies and goes directly to what's pure and what is honest and what is safe. And I think for me, Nina is a really different woman um, and is so, not helpless, but like just wants something, wants something from anybody is just like, help me. And I think that Maggie really gave me the space to be that vulnerable all the time and not feel like I wasn't going to be taken care of in that moment and in the edit. And that was very important to me. I think it felt, you know, a lot of times you're on set and you're doing something that's like really scary or really emotional or really provocative or re and, and it's, you're giving so much of yourself and you're like, there's something in me that knows that this is not gonna be taken care of, but I'm doing my job and I have to do my job. But in this, I didn't feel like I was doing a job. I felt like I was doing my art. I felt like I was expressing my true artist self and so was she and so was she and so were all of these people and it was like a family and it was like everyone had each other's back and if one of us had a hard day everyone was there and it was like 
no, that was great. Like, don't, don't go into your hotel room and cry and like regret choosing this as a career. Cause like, <laughs> cause I've done that a lot. Um, but I think that's the thing that made it so special with Maggie was that no matter what like beautiful moment or extremely ugly moment, it was totally safe. And that is perfect. One of the things I love about the movie is the great chemistry among all the cast members you see on screen, but that, that's also, there's an undercurrent of tension. You almost feel like you're always on the verge of something dangerous happening. It's funny, after the screening yesterday, I was browsing Twitter to see the reactions. A good journalist friend of mine said, and people say uncut gems is stressful. This was more stressful for me to watch. And I understood what she meant, and I think, that, that tension is just so palpable, especially between the three mothers, almost like the three corners of a triangle, someone with grown children, a new mother, and an expectant mother. Can you talk about a little bit building that chemistry and tension between the three of you and how you work with your actors, kind of maintaining that? Hmm. I think... Mm -mm. Okay, I don't want to get too. I I I went. I was on the jury at Cannes this year, mm -hmm. and I saw twenty four incredible movies. And I saw them like ten days after I finished my final mix on this movie. And I realized something at Cannes. I was like, "Oh, you can do whatever you want." Um, but I, I think in this film, I. I don't know how to explain this. I, I thought I will be able to do whatever I want. I will be able to express whatever I want if I hang it on a form that's known so that people feel, oh, I know it's coming. Oh, I've got this rhythm. Then I can like 180 degree it. Mm -hmm. I can do whatever I want, but I have to set up, I was using um, of the language of a thriller, and even sometimes like with a little horror sprinkled in, and a little French film. <laughs> but, but really, the, what you're talking about in a way maybe is the thriller aspect of the mm -hmm. story, which I, I wanted to create that, um, and then I wanted the, the, the who done it, the terrifying thing to be, you know, what's a actually inside of Leda's mind and actually inside probably of many, many people's minds. Of course, that's the most terrifying thing, of course, you know, what lives in our minds, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I think I sort of wanted to use the language of kind of classic thriller um, in a way to create that tension. I think, if that's what you mean. No, that's definitely what I mean. Okay. And um, Olivia, Dakota, and Dagmar, do you, do you want to add anything, building both that chemistry and tension among the three of you? Olivia, if you want to start. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Looks like I asked a million dollar question. <laughs> uh, you just looked so scared. <laughs> yes. Um, I never want to let Maggie down. Um, uh, <laughs> um, yes, no, uh, we built... built a, I'm so sorry, I wasn't really listening, but we... Um, uh, tension? Tension, tension. Tension. Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea. Yeah, it was sort of wasn't... Right. It wasn't really like that, you know? Dag. In a way, I think what? they were... Did you, did you, did you create sorry. tension? <laughs> no, well... Did I create tension? No, I mean, yeah, it wasn't Dag sort of... The dynamic between tension. the three characters, the both the harmony and tension they have. You know, it's interesting because I was ready to create tension. <laughs> when I read it, I was like, all right. And Maggie said, tag. She would spin me the other way. And, um, you know, she was like the great note whisperer. She would come in and drop like 12 and, and, and just say, whatever, whatever sinks deep is, like, we'll see what happens. And so on the page, um, and in the book, her, Callie's character um, is bold and brash, and she's the one who wants to get a snack for everyone, but it has to be her snack. Like, 
I know moms like that, and sometimes I'm one like that too. Um, but I, I remember Maggie saying to me, let's, she wants to be validated. She wants to be loved. She's wonderful. I've never felt like Ed was saying more relaxed or more confident in a movie. And I'm in a bikini with a like <laughs> pregnant fake belly and my jigglies are out. And, um, <laughs> and Maggie made me feel extremely beautiful. And, and we discussed how not every woman who is loud and opinionated is a fucking bitch. So let's try different. And so I think the tension isn't like, oh, three different personalities and they all hate each other. It's three different women who want to know that they're good inside and sometimes don't know how to do that. And I think that's where the tension line, right? That's I don't what I would know. have said. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> <laughs> na, 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 na. <laughs> I also feel like Maggie does this thing where, like, life is tension. Every day for me is tension. And I have moments with women and men and people and everyone that is tension. But... You, now it's like you go to the movies because it's escapism or you're, watch, you're binge watching a show because you want to feel less tension. But like, isn't the point of art to make you feel things that you need to look at and then you feel tension in this movie and it's like, I feel like women can just look at each other and have like millions of different tensions mm. without saying anything. Yeah, and that scene, like I love the scene. You're, I mean, you're asking about the three, these three women here. Mm -hmm. I love that scene between you guys um, when you've just found the little girl. And so, if, so in terms of tension, like these two women looking at each other. Dag, someone said to me about you, uh, gave, was giving me a note early on about the movie, and they said, "Well, you know, I don't know. I just I can't tell if I'm supposed to love her or if I'm supposed to be afraid of her." And I was like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> you know? I mean, how many people do you actually feel? I feel that like way that's about? what my kids think about me every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, that that scene, that scene, you're like, "Is she gonna? Is Nina gonna cry? Is she gonna apologize? Is she embarrassed? Are they gonna have sex? Yes. Like, what's gonna happen?" Yes. 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 That there's so much tension yeah. or vibration between you guys, but you, I don't think you could articulate what it is. Is it what kind? It's, it's, it, I love the scene because it's like 500,000 different things going on between you guys. Mm -hmm. And I mean, beyond my wildest dreams. What yeah, but do. that's you because you didn't tell us to play it one way. You would do your whisper thing and then it just yeah. like. Stuff we, so we, we each had 20 whispers. Yeah. They're all going, okay, so you go. so <laughs> Yeah, then we'd be like, what'd she say to you? <laughs> hey, what'd she say to you? <laughs> um, I love the visual language you created in this movie, and also the cinematographer you work with, Helen Loire. Yeah. She, is, yeah. she is a yeah. legend. Um, you stay very close to your characters. It's a very intimate um, kind of movie. So can you talk about crafting that and your preference to stay close to the characters? Well, I think it's so interesting. So many people have said that to me. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, early on in, in editing, I got a note saying, like, we'd love to expand a little bit. Can we see where we are? And so I was watching the beginning of the movie and going like, oh, big wide shot. Oh, another big wide shot. Oh, another big wide shot. But it doesn't. I think it doesn't get digested that way. Mm -hmm. um, I think because the movie is so subjective inside of Leda's mind, but it's in, actually, in terms of a cinematic language, there's a lot of kind of moving back and being wide, but it doesn't feel like it for some reason. Mm -hmm. Helen, um, I am so grateful to that woman. Um, she, you know, she's got five kids. Uh, she really taught me how to prep. I knew that I needed to prep. In fact, I met a DP who I was a massive fan of, who sort of pretended for a minute that he wanted to shoot the movie. And um, <laughs> he, and we had lunch a few times, but um, he, he was like, I don't prep. I don't do any prep. And I was like, wow, I don't think I can do that. You know, I, I, 
and Helene was like, of course we need to prep. We need to, we spent hours on Zoom in the pandemic kind of thinking through the scenes. Then, you know, we scouted together and then we really shot listed together. But I never, we had shot listed, I mean, really organized. And I never opened my binder with my shot list in it one time, the whole time we were shooting. Because, and, and I don't know how much we did that we had imagined. I, I certainly, coming from being an actress, I want my actors to f be free. And if they come in with, I mean, and they always did come in with their own sense of what they were doing, you can't like, you can't really shot list. But we, the point is we really knew what the scenes were about. Together, we knew kind of what we were after. So then it was like jazz, because we, we were free enough to run with, with it. Like, have you guys done scenes where you're at a dinner table? You know, like, let's say all of us are at a dinner table, and somebody's shooting it, and they're like, they need two sizes on you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and then they need your POV of everybody, and my POV of everyone, and you want to shoot yourself by the end yeah. of the day. But if you By the know, end of the four days that that takes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But if you know that the scene is really about Paul, and how he feels about Peter, then... And I don't have to come in that day. <laughs> you can... <laughs> You could shoot it in half a day, which is what we had to do anyway, because we only had 28 days, you know. But he got, you know, she helped me to really understand. And I uh, was sorry, let's talk about something else, but I learned to love the lenses. I didn't know that language, you know. I knew some languages of filmmaking, and I was like, get that 50 off. That's shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't talk to her like that, but in my mind, I was like, it's God, was there's just, you know, this, that's, I, I, I really learned, and I told Helen that at the end, and she was like, yes, you did, you learned quite quickly. Oh, that was terrible for <laughs> no, she was like, she was like totally like, yeah, so people learn about lenses, whatever. And uh, to me, it was like an incredibly expansive, I just, it, she really taught me so much. I, I know Jessie Buckley isn't here, but I do want to talk about her a little bit because um, you and Jessie, Olivia, you and Jessie, you basically build the same character in two different points of her life. So I'm wondering what goes into that. Did you have any conversations about how to, how to tackle this character in two um, no. different life stages? Um, we both, we knew each other a bit beforehand, and I, I'm obsessed with Jessie. I'm, I, I just think she's incredible. Um, we spoke and said, what accent should we do? And that was kind of what we decided, and then we didn't speak again. And um, what's lovely, though, I think only in this moment I might have realised that people always go, what's your, no, I don't know, your... Where did you come from? How did you? Blah, blah, blah. Um, it's all in the script, and clearly Jesse and I didn't talk to each other, and we found it in the script, and it is all there, and we both ended up with something. I think even though we're clearly two different people, we understood it was so beautifully written that we um, we sort of came up with the same thing, in a way, all, all bit different. But a woman in her twenties is not the same woman in her thirties or the forties. You know, we all change, so it's okay that we're different. And Maggie said, "It's okay." You don't have to meet and have a great big thing about it. And she's right. Um, uh, but I think it's because the script is so good. We just knew our roadmap was clear. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we didn't go massively awry. Um, yes, I don't know. For some reason, that was a massive moment for me. Just that second went, oh, my God, it's the script. That's why we... Um, <laughs> yeah, so we basically said, we're from Shipley in Leeds, and we've been educated, so the edge is taken off it. See you there. <laughs> Thank you, I love that. I think we have to wrap that up. Thank you so much Thank you. for being here. Thank you for coming. <laughs>